Hello, Howard fam. Um, it's Ty, Taisha. Um, for those who, of you who don't know me, I'm a PhD candidate in um, your department. And thank you, Timothy, for um, giving me an opportunity to share some tips, that um, some strategies that I've used when I've taken the GQE. I took it twice, once as an MA student um, and once as a PhD um, student and I passed both times um, I think I did a bit better on certain things during the, f the first um, the for the MA and I think it was just because I had less to study for um, um, at the time you know you had to take two um, subjects in two areas and now for the PhD I had the third and I think um, the extra um, <laughs> the extra um, subject area um, made it, you know, a little bit more difficult to um, pass. Um, but I did it. Um, it's over. And um, I just wanted to share for you a couple of tips during that week. I mean, I was really supposed to talk about the day before and the day of, but it's really that whole week that is just, um, can be very draining. Um, and what I always try to do, um, I'm like high energy anyway, but um, what I always try to do is relax. And um, during that week when I'm not taking the exam, I'm exercising, um, jogging or swimming, and I'm stretching at night. Um, I'm stretching at night in order for me to go to sleep, to wake up in the, ne the next morning refreshed. I usually try not to exercise that night because then they'll make my adrenaline higher and make it harder to go to sleep. So usually I'll stretch at night and do some yoga positions that make it very um, um, yoga for flexibility and relaxation that makes it easier to go to sleep. Maybe have some chamomile tea or something to make me just calm. Um, and get up the next morning and go for a walk or go for a jog to kind of get that adrenaline going because I know I'm going to need it the next day. Um, but hydrate yourself. Um, eat foods that are brain food. Um, try not to get yourself full at all. So, and the same foods that um, I would, you know, recommend, I know everybody has like different dietary restrictions, but um, the foods that I would eat that week, um, you can go on like Live Strong or WebMD or look up in any other site to look up brain foods, but fish, berries, water, caffeine, um, nuts, um, whole grains um, are just some of the foods that you can eat to kind of avocado to stimulate um, brain power. But again, don't eat to your full because it's just so much going on that you, you just want to always be kind of ready to go. Um, but that's what I would say during the exam. Um, and don't spend your, all your time reviewing. Maybe, you know, look at your flashcards or whatever method that you're using, um, to kind of reiterate some stuff. But if at this point, really, if you don't know it, you don't know it. And, um, just be calm and understand that there will be some questions on the GQE that you can answer. Um, you didn't take all those classes for nothing, right? And so during the exam, relax and bring a dictionary. Um, I know when I took the exam, there was, um, the dictionaries were provided, but just in case someone else is using the dictionary when you may need it, just bring your own dictionary. Um, and um, cause at the time, I don't know if they changed it, but at the time you could not like go on dictionary.com or Merriam Webster's dictionary or OED online while you're taking the exam. So bring a, a, a book, the um, form of the dictionary. Um, time management. Um, okay. Time management and picking your question and answering your question are all like together. Um, so when you're looking at the question, when you're choosing your question, spend about a minute per question, like looking it over to under, make sure you understand what they're, the question is asking you. And underlying, if it says examine, discuss, examine, analyze, then that's three different things that you have to do when you want to make sure that you're doing all three things. If it's saying um, use a poem, a play, and um, 
a novel, then you need that's a part of the question. You want to make sure you're doing all three things. And when you're choosing that question, you want to choose the question that you can answer all of the answer. Uh, most of the questions have two, three, or sometimes four um, sections to answer that entire question. And so you want to make sure that, okay, I can answer this. I can answer that. I have the books that I can use for this. And you just want to look at that and say, okay, the ones that you can't answer when you're reading it, you know it, cross it out, eliminate that one, go back and look at the ones that, you know, you, you kind of have some negotiating room and that you absolutely know, cause there'll be some that you like, oh, I got this. And so, and then the ones you're kind of, you know, not sure about, look at those and say, okay, I think I have this one a little bit better. I think my argument would, you know, gel a little bit more with this question and then choose your questions that way. That's what I did. I'm, you know, but that's, a, I suggest that's a way to choose your question. Um, once you choose the question, then you can say, I think based on what I know about this particular the answer you know I can give to this it'll take me about this month you know I'll need more time for this question and sort it out by how difficult the question is for you to answer don't spend I would not recommend spending um equal amount of time on each question because each question may not have the same level of difficulty for you so choose the time based on how long you think it will take to answer that particular question um and write down the steps um, and then mark on the side of the question at the time that you should be finished with that particular um, question. So if it's like 11.45, 11.45, I should be finished with this. And 11.45, move on. Go to the next question. Leave. Try to, you know, work a little faster. And if you have time left over, go back. Um, and I, I say that because you're going to, you, you should always leave some time at the end to go back and write over your answer like to go over your answers and that's the time that you can use to answer that other question the last thing you want to do is not fully answer the last question because you spent too much time on that first one so but again it's your strategy <laughs> but this is just what I suggest but if you can stick to that time that you have on the side then that's that's the best thing that's the, it's sticking to that time that you have allocated. Um, like I said, pay attention to how many steps the question has. Make sure you underline and know that you need to follow each of those steps. Eliminate questions that you know you cannot answer and allocate the time that you think it will take to answer the question. Um, and, you know, divide it accordingly, according, you know, based on the time that you have for the GQE. Um, Packing your food. Um, I use Ziplocs. I did not bring loud food. I, I mean, apples, you know, are kind of loud, especially if you're like, so bring like a little, you know, baggie with the apples kind of cut already. So you're not like crunching, you, you're crunching, but it's not as loud because you're not having a whole apple in your mouth. And so bring, I brought cashews. Cashews are like awesome. Like they're, um, they make you feel better. I don't know what's in them, but cashew, like if you're not allergic to nuts, of course, but cashews, they're, they're like happy drug. I mean, really. So if you can get some cashews and if you like cashews, I highly recommend cashews. Um, and there's even a cashew shake at, um, Everlasting Life. Mm, my gosh. So powerful. I mean, like when I was like, I don't need coffee. I've just been doing too, way too much caffeine. Totally did the cashew shake. It works. I suggest you experiment with the foods before you don't want to try anything new during a GQE. So if you're like curious about the cashews and how it'll make you feel or the cashew shake, I suggest trying it and then, you know, you're on a roll during a GQE. Don't try cashews on day of GQ if you never, you know, you're not even into cashews. But um, I always bring caffeine. Um, for those of you who don't do it, I get it. Um, but I don't do coffee. I do green tea, yerba mate, feel good energy. Um, water, I brought water. I didn't drink too much water because I don't want to keep going to the restroom. Um, the tea is probably already a diuretic. So, um, But you may want to drink some water. Um, berries. I brought berries as well. Um, so I brought pretty much the brain food. I brought stuff that cashews would make me kind of feel full. The berries give me something to pick on. Um, yeah, so, um, 
but I put them in little baggies, you know, I had it all open, you know, so I wouldn't have to make any noise. I wasn't shifting around too much to distract other people from what, you know, what they were doing. Um, let's see, I'm trying to, making sure that I'm covering, I covered everything. But the biggest thing is to relax. If you've prepared yourself, you just say, you know, this is what it is. It's going to be a, a, an intense week. And after you take the GQE, you know, because you'll have like maybe one or two more um, after your first one, chill out, chill out, like, you know, walk the city, like, oh, I guess in January, well, I, I walk the city, so walk the city, just do things to like relax, because if you're not relaxed, then you're not going to remember the stuff anyway, so I highly recommend relaxing, taking care of yourself that week and realizing that your education, whether it's a year and a half or a year in the MA program or three or four years in the PhD program, that your studies have prepared you for the GQE. And so um, I hope this is, um, you know, a help to um, you all. I so wish I was there sometimes. Um, but... You know, it's always nice to see your faces in lock call.